Hi folks, this is Dr. Rob Sivers. I am the Carb Addiction Doc and we're doing a little mini series, a three-part series. The first uh, video that we dropped, uh, which just dropped a few days ago, um, is about the history of inflammation and how we've transferred inflammation from an, protecting us from external threat to now creating inflammation within ourselves and suffering the consequences of a very healthy human uh, healing process that is now being transferred internally into our blood vessels and into our tissues that's causing inflammation. Well, the last uh, uh, discussion, I focused very heavily on the blood vessels. Um, in this discussion, we are going to talk about how you can evaluate your own inflammation and understand that the commonest cause of death in this country, in the United States, is heart attack and stroke risk from inflammation in the blood vessels. But there are other often non-lethal forms of inflammation uh, all caused by the same products, nicotine and carbohydrates. Now we're talking mostly about carbohydrates. And that would be to joint capsules, to ligaments, to tendons, to muscles, um, frozen shoulders, fibromyalgia, um, plantar fasciitis, Peyronie's disease, all of the inflammatory collagen disorders caused by crystallization. In fact, I heard somebody say a beautiful thing is that carbohydrates caramelize your ligaments and tendons. And I just thought, wow, that is such a brilliant description because technically that's what's going on there. And my reference for that is Richard Bernstein, one of the gods of um, diabetes management in the modern era. And he talks about how high blood sugar caramelizes those ligaments. Um, and he's got plenty of references on that if we're anybody looking. But we're looking at joint inflammation. We're looking at vascular inflammation, muscle inflammation, recovery. If you're an athlete, why does it take me forever to recover from um, a long run or a, or a race or whatever it is? From GI inflammation, all of these inflammatory uh, uh, situations. So this video is going to focus very heavily on how do I, as a metabolic health specialist, as a clinician, as an MDA PhD, if you walk into my office for a consultation, how do we look at this? The first thing we do is we get, a, we get a history. Have you had a CAC score, a coronary artery calcium score? Coronary artery calcium score is critical to tell us how your body is responding to chronic inflammation in your blood vessels. And is there a significant blood vascular inflammation that has been ongoing? The single best test, the single best screening tool for that is uh, um, a CAC score. Do you have a history, a personal history or family history of cancer? Cancer is a pro-inflammatory disease. Cancer is a pro-inflammatory disease. Have you had melanoma? Have you had breast cancer? Have you had colon cancer? Is there a strong family history of those cancers? That tells us about the trend of inflammation in your family. So the history is very important. Do you have autoimmune disease? 82% of the pe people, of the females, the women that come into my practice, are on some sort of thyroid medication, almost always Hashimoto's disease. We'll talk, there's another talk coming up about Hashimoto's, but do you have autoimmune disease? Do you have lupus? Do you have any other forms of autoimmune disease? Those are all very important. Do you have elevated eosinophils? eosinophilia, which may be the skin, it may be the lungs, asthma, it may be the upper gut if you've got acid reflux or irritable bowel syndrome or Crohn's or ulcerative colitis. Those diseases are all part of the inflammatory process. So part of my questioning when you come into my practice, we're going to spend quite a bit of time looking at your family history, looking at your personal history, and I'm going to look at it in part through the lens of inflammation. Because if we can quieten down that inflammation... That is an ideal game plan to reduce the risk of diseases. Alzheimer's is an inflammatory disease of the brain. All of these are inflammatory processes, but in order to do that, we have to understand them. So what markers do I do? I'll take the history, your family history, your, your personal history, to get to know you as a unique individual, to understand what your inflammatory risk is. Not all disease is caused by inflammation, but a lot of it is. So once we understand that, we'll go and look at some of those inflammatory markers. And on your, in your blood work, I'm going to do a, a detailed blood work analysis. None of it is blah, 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 high air. I, I don't do all the bullshit. You can go to a functional medicine doctor and get tests of every yin yang. Ludicrous because it's non-responsive. So they're going to do all these numbers to throw medications at you. 
And the next video is going to outline that. I want to know what your current inflammatory risk is as a baseline and to track it. What are we going to look at? We're going to look at your white cell count. We're going to look at the percentages that make up that white cell count. As I said, we're going to look at monocytes, eosinophils, basophils, and we're going to look at the fractional percentage to determine your vascular inflammation and how your body responds on a cellular immune level and a humoral immune level against those. We don't need to measure all of the immunoglobulins and all the complements. And the, I don't want to know whether your body is currently inflamed. I want to know how your body responds to inflammation. There's a difference. I don't have to do special tests to tell me that you have inflammation. It doesn't help me in treating it. it. doesn't help me in treating it to know what your complement levels are and your immunoglobulin. All I need is to see if your immune system is ramped up or not. And I can do some very simple tests with that. I can look at your lipid numbers. And your lipid numbers, particularly your triglycerides and HDL, will tell me whether you've got an A or a B pattern. I don't need NMR. I don't need all the sophisticated breakdown because it just correlates and corroborates what I already know. I'm going to look at your blood sugar. I'm going to look at your hemoglobin A1c. I'm going to look at your iron studies, in particular your ferritin. It's a marker of intracellular inflammation. I'm going to look at your male or female hormones in both my males and my females to look at what insulin's doing and look to see how the uh, uh, sex hormones, I hate that word because the hormones are associated with sexuality and gynecology, but they really have many, many other roles to play. Like every cell in the male or female body has an estrogen receptor. Why? It's got nothing to do with sexuality. It has to do with inflammatory processes. Hi, folks. We're in October, and October is the beginning of the ugliest stretch of the year, certainly in this country. And what I see in my patients, I see Halloween, I see Thanksgiving, um, we see the whole Christmas period, we see New Year it gets to be very, very ugly toward the end of the year. And I've got a four-year-old at home and we're going to go out trick-or-treating. Uh, this year, I've got to be Luigi because uh, he's going to be Mario, uh, if you know what I mean. But one of the temptations out there is our neighbors are throwing candy at everybody. And the cool thing is with my son, they're going to give him matchbox cars. They're going to give him little uh, things to play with rather than candy. But I know the temptation is enormous for me. And one of the things I load myself up with so that as a fat guy, I don't, and mentally fat carb addict, I don't have the temptation. I take with me my ketone IQ. And when everybody else is unwrapping uh, their chocolates on the road, and there are a couple of places where they do jello shots, and you know, it's my neighborhood. Um, instead of doing that, I'll do a ketone IQ. And it just helps me to get through this. Uh, I'm not going to do candy. I'm not going to do jello shots on the road while my son is gathering all his stuff. And I can still be really have a good time with my neighbors, be very friendly with them, but I don't need to eat the crap that occurs on Halloween evening as long as I protect myself with my handy dandy box of ketone IQ. That's what I'll be doing this Halloween. Try it. So we're going to look at those markers. We're going to look at CRP as an acute marker of C-reactive protein, highly selective CRP. We're going to look potentially at homocysteine, but I don't care if your MTHFR gene is elevated. Homocysteine is just a marker of inflammation. I very rarely even do it. We did some studies with homocysteine way back. We did some studies with IGF. It was a promising marker, but I don't need that to tell me about your level of inflammation or to track it. So I'm doing a science study, yes, but anybody that's ordering those markers doesn't really have significant value. We don't do lipid markers in terms of omega-3 and omega-6 ratios because that's in the blood and I don't care what's happening in the blood. I don't do leptin. I don't do any of that garbage that is a waste of your blood and a waste of your money and a distraction. And we'll talk about that in the third video. But I will look at uric acid because that's a very powerful marker of, of um, uh, inflammation. I look at an ANA. I will look at a rheumatoid factor, RF anti-nuclear antigen and rheumatoid factor, and I'll be able to interpret those in terms of autoimmune disease. As long as we got the baseline, we can tell about your inflammatory system. We don't have to do the deep dive that I'm going to talk about in detail in the next video. It's unnecessary, it's a waste of time, and it's a distraction. And once we see your level of inflammation, we can then begin to counter that, not with a whole bunch of product, not with a whole bunch of product that interferes or dumbs down the immune system. 
and dumbs down your inflammatory system, that's just doing its job. But let's take away the cause. Let's take away, let's identify and take away the cause, help you to take away the cause and to understand the cause of that inflammation. And that's the focus of my practice. As a metabolic health specialist, if you dumb down the system that's protecting you, you're doing yourself a disservice. We may have to dumb it down slightly for a little while to protect you from dying of a heart attack or a stroke. But long term, what we want to do is get rid of the cause. Let's get rid of the cause. And if we do that effectively, if you're willing to work on that, you are going to be healthy from every perspective. And you're going to be able to respond and react in a healthy way to your body. One of the things that really bothers me, and we, when I was in the laboratory, when I was a young doctor, we had a moratorium on doing this. Anytime you see a drug being advertised on TV that ends, it's got some crazy name, and ends with an MAB, monoclonal antibody, or infliximab. Um, anytime you see those crazy products being advertised, those are monoclonal antibodies, single antibodies that interfere with your inflammatory cascade. And yes, they help to heal a certain part of that. But now your inflammatory system is dumbed down and cannot effectively take care of other parts of your body. So it's fine to use those uh, medications to get control of a particular inflammatory system for a short period of time. But why don't we address the cause so that you don't need those very powerful medications that completely screw you over when something else happens? You get COVID, you get an infection, you get tuberculosis, or whatever it may be, when you are on those medications, your body loses its ability to fight against them. You cut yourself. Anybody that's on Zeralta or a blood thinner knows that they bleed like crazy. I was going to use an analogy that I won't. They bleed like crazy. So yes, you're protecting yourself from clotting in your blood vessels, but you're now putting yourself at risk. You bump your head, you bleed inside your bread, inside your head, you bleed into a joint. Ask any hemophiliac how horrible that is. That's what these drugs do. And, and why don't we then correct the reason why you have that inflammation first and foremost? Surely that's going to protect you and yet allow allow your inflammatory system, allow your clotting system to work normally against all the other problems you may encounter. There's logic behind this, folks, but there's no money behind it. That's the problem. I don't have a product or a drug to sell you. So if you're spending money or your healthcare system is spending money on drugs to counter your infl inflammatory system and you have not been educated and you don't understand what the cause of, nobody's talked to you about the cause of this and made the cause go away. You're doing yourself a massive disservice. Or, worse still, you're being manipulated and taken advantage of by those people selling you those drugs. And they may be well-intentioned, but they don't understand what I've just talked about. Let's go to root cause. Let's see if you can solve that. So you don't have that pro-inflammatory response. That's the goal. You know, for example, if you're going to get eaten up by mosquitoes at five o'clock in the evening here in Florida. Either protect yourself with some with clothing or protect yourself with an anti-mosquito spray or don't go out at five o'clock, go out at noon. But you, that, that's logic. You're going to do that. You're going to do that. But what, what the equivalent of a lot of these other uh, uh, manufacturers, these pharma manufacturers say, you know what, don't worry about five o'clock. Go out and get bitten, get chowed down by the mosquitoes. And when you come back in, I'll give you a medication to solve the problem. So you itch less. How stupid is that? And yet everybody taking those medications without understanding and treating uh, uh, the root cause, GLP-1s, all the MAB monoclonal antibodies, all the INBs, the uh, INH medica medications that end with those letters. Everybody on anticoagulant or statins or plaque-reducing agents. Anybody being treated for SIRS, chronic, chronic inflammatory response syndrome, with a whole bunch of product. That's like going out at five o'clock in a Florida swamp, getting bitten by mosquitoes and coming back in and saying, okay, fix the problem. 
We're victims, folks. And my job in my practice is to help you to understand your level of inflammation and work against that by changing your lifestyle so that you don't have that as a problem. And if you do have an ongoing problem, let's target that one little thing with something specific, but not some major, huge, big thing that damages the rest of your body. If I've made you think, if you're interested in finding out what your own inflammatory status is, what the causes are, and how we can fix it, give me a shout. 561-517-0642. And if I've saved you some money by not spending it on all these ridiculous things, or cutting things out of your life that don't really matter, throw us a buck on our PayPal account, on our Patreon account, Keep these messages free. And the next video, we're going to target a particular thing where I've seen many, many victims spend tens of thousands of dollars without fixing the problem. I am the Carb Addiction Doc. My job is to make you think.